What's poppin' everybody? This is not going to be a discussion related to Q3 and our update 43 housing update, the quality of life additions coming with that, the bug fixes. This is not something tied to update 44 with the PVP update and all that. This is a developer deep dive, which is essentially a interview that we do with the developers every once in a while. And they basically do what the title says, it deep dives into various topics. You can see here Zoss Kevin, who is one of our community manager guys that's just very active with the community. He's pretty much the only guy that really talks to us on the forums. He said, for the next developer deep dive, you get to vote on the next blog focus out of the three topics below. Item sets, delves in public dungeons, and standalone quests. We plan on covering all three, but the results of the poll will decide which topic you get to read about first. The poll is live now and will be available until Friday, June 28th at 10 a.m. Eastern. If the three topics mentioned are not of interest, let us know in the thread which topics you would like to see highlighted in a future developer deep dive. So this is my, um, I wanna give some criticism first, and then I wanna talk about which one I voted for and why. So number one, nobody is concerned with anything about the delves and public dungeons Nobody is concerned with anything about the standalone quests, just period. Standalone quests are non-zone story quests. These are side quests like in Westfield. Nobody is, is remotely concerned with these two things. Sure, were there like a couple bugs in um, the Silorn Public Dungeon when we got update 42 release? Yeah, but like that's, it's fixed. You know what I mean? Like this is not a glaring issue for the game. This is like a one-time thing that you'll do and experience the first time. You can replay it on other characters, obviously, but it's not like we're, you know, getting to have different outcomes and all this different stuff. Like, it is what it is. So I don't really know why we're doing a deep dive into this stuff. Um, now, item sets is a completely different discussion because, as you all know, we've got over 600 sets in this game currently, and there is a ton of item set bloat, meaning there is a ton of item sets that we don't use that are just frankly very poorly designed or very poorly tuned, I guess is a, a nice way to put it. And lots of this stuff can be tweaked by changing buffs that you get, changing some numbers, some cast, not cast times, but you know, durations, stuff like that. And you know, I think it is worth talking about with that. I think we're at the point now in the game, we're 10 years in, we've been doing the same exact thing for every single thing for the longest time. Every single time we get a dungeon DLC, we get three sets and a monster set from every dungeon. No matter if it's good or not, you're just going to get three and a monster set. When you get a new zone, you get three crafted sets, three overland sets. The new trial has four for Magicka DPS, for Stamina DPS, for healing, and for tanking, ideally. This is, this is just how things are. You get three mythics and... The problem is, is eventually you run out of ideas. And so you start just throwing stuff together, piecing stuff together that's not worth it. And what I want to know is why we're doing that. Because what I would rather them do is not add any more sets for a little bit. And I'd rather them tweak some of the sets that we already have in the game to enhance play styles. For instance, a really, really popular play style is Ice Warden, like a Frost Mage. Why not enhance some other sets other than frostbite and stuff like that to make it more exciting why not enhance a lot of the dungeon sets that nobody has ever heard of anybody using so ultimately what i want to know is why we continue to add sets that we know nobody's going to use like the class sets for instance which is ultimately a really good idea but the implementation of which is, is poor why are we continuing to add trial sets that nobody's going to use for instance, the healing set from Lucent Citadel gives you 1667 stamina and magicka added to your group, which equates to about 158 weapon and spell damage for your group. That's nothing. That's, that's not going to do anything. There's no point in releasing sets like this if they're not going to be exciting and people aren't going to use them. The thing about a new chapter, a new expansion, is it's all supposed to be exciting. These standalone quests, the delves in the public dungeons are very exciting. There's there's no need for a deep dive on these, right? So I don't know what people are, are voting for here, um, but understanding why we keep adding sets that nobody's gonna use, why we're not tweaking old sets 
that people aren't using and why we're focused on the meta sets and nerfing those is beyond me. Um, and that's that's something I would really like to discuss with that. You know, so let's see what other people said. Out of these three topics, item sets seem like the most interesting one for us to gain some perspective on. ESO undoubtedly has an issue with set bloat. Amen. The model of introducing X number of new sets every patch has led to us having hundreds of sets which are considered useless by the vast majority. Have the developers ever considered that instead of introducing new sets with a patch, they could instead go back and rework a certain number of old sets which are underutilized? I'm sure they've got the metrics to see how many players use specific sets, as well as the content that those players typically do. The other thing that I want to add to this is a fundamental design flaw with the way we interact as a community with the combat team and the developers. So most other very popular MMOs, I'm going to use World of Warcraft as an, as an example because it's just objectively the most popular MMO. You get constant, constant updates from developers. Here's what we're thinking. Here's what we're tweaking. Here's what we're doing. It's not four times a year. It's constant. And the thing that I think ESO struggles with the most is you have a group of guys that are sitting around a table brainstorming what to do to the game to change a variety of things that they think need to be changed. Okay, so that's their vision, right? They're sitting around a table. Let's use AOE taunt as an example. Collectively, they're like, we don't want it. We don't want AOE taunting. They've never told us why outside of it's not in their vision. And the problem is, is just like anything, if I'm developing a product, it doesn't matter how much I like it, what my vision is, if it's not selling, it's not selling. Now that's not saying ESO is not successful, it's extremely successful. But a lot of times these developers are coming up with ideas that they think in their mind is good, that doesn't play out to be good. They have exponentially more experience when it comes to developing a video game. But players generally, have significantly more experience playing the game that they're actually developing and telling them specifically, hey, this is how this feels. This doesn't feel good. Why is your vision like this, right? And what would be nice, in my opinion, is more communication directly with Brian Wheeler and his team. He's the lead combat designer. And I just wanna be able to see once a month what exactly they're planning for. Because the fact is by the time their updates and their ideas get to the PTS, they're not gonna wipe it clean. It, if the resounding answer to their update is just, this sucks. For instance, Gravelord Sacrifice was a resounding, it had a resounding negative impact, a resounding negative response from the community. They could have avoided this by saying before, once a month in a check-in, hey guys, here's what we're thinking about planning for this update. We'd like to possibly change Blast Bones to do this. What do you guys think? This would have saved them so much trouble because then by the time they get to the PTS, they're not gonna take Gravelord Sacrifice out because then it's just been a waste of time for them. They have to look like they created something over this time. And all they end up doing is tweaking values on it, right? But they don't end up completely taking that away. And there's there's this big disconnect. And it's the same thing with item sets. The community is asking for a change in itemization, do something new, do something exciting. The class sets were a good idea. The way they were implemented was not. That's different. That's a good idea up front. They got lucky with that, but the problem is, is they didn't do anything to drastically change the sets to make them attractive. And now we have seven more sets added to the game that have still not been fixed and that nobody's using. And when I say nobody, I'm meaning relative to the population as a whole. Very, very little people just objectively are using the class sets, okay? Let's keep reading some comments. I'd be interested to know what the relation between item set functionality and skill or ability functionality is. There are many item sets which function like skills or abilities and vice versa. How does the team decide which effects to make into skills or abilities and which effects to make into item sets? Well, I think the big thing is ultimately you end up having classes that have a very, very weak toolkit 
And I think this can be answered by you're giving certain, you know, class role combos the ability to wear a set that's going to fix a problem where other classes have an ability that fixes that problem. It's just diversity in gameplay and stuff. Okay. Of these options, item sets, I guess, how is this list decided on them? I'd rather see a deep dive on overall performance efforts, PvP and its issues, and the combat system, class identity, hybridization, contradictory changes in general. Performance issues and combat swings cause the most unrest in the community, so I think that should take priority over these topics. Thinking back to the combat deep dive from December 2022, it wasn't well received because it didn't address any of the specific uh, concerns following update 35. It felt like a brainstorm response to a bad situation rather than an actual solution. My point is, whatever you guys deliver as a quote unquote deep dive should be more than just an affirmation of your design principles. When the deep dive label is used, there's an expectation that you'll be getting into the nitty gritty of a topic. Please review that thread just to make sure we're all getting the most out of precious developer time. Hopefully there's been some lessons learned from that time. I could not have said this better myself. Ultimately, what this turns into is we get two topics that are going to be discussed, right? 33% of this deep dive is going to be about delves and public dungeons, something that generally, outside of 19 people on the forums randomly, the player base just does not, I don't need a deep dive on how you decided to make this delves final boss, this this humanoid. Like it's, this, this doesn't matter. And the things that people have been concerned with that would be genuinely helpful as a deep dive would be the discussion around ink drop rates right now and scribing. We understand how scribing was made. We understand what the vision was. Why did they choose to make the ink drop rate so low? And then tout 4,000 different combinations all, and all this experimentation. Why did they choose to not make it account wide? Let's come down to item sets then. Why are we getting the same formula every year, getting lots of item sets that don't matter, that nobody really uses, and nothing changes? And I agree with this last statement down here. Please review that thread just to make sure we're all getting the most out of precious developer time. I don't know if they're short staffed or what it is, but we get so little communication, not with Sauce Kevin. This guy talks to us all the time, but he's the community manager. He's not doing stuff with combat. He's not the one behind the design principles and the vision for the game. So how much, how much you know, information is he realistically gonna be able to give us? He's an awesome dude, but he's not the one that I think a lot of us wanna to talk to. And this is all the communication we get. This is a lesson that you would have thought that Zoss would have learned over the last 10 years, and that is to talk to your player base. And before you do these big sweeping changes, before you do all this stuff like update 35 and you cause a ton of people to leave, why don't you tell us what you have in store for update 43 right now? Because then we can say, that sounds great. I would do this instead. Nobody's interested in this or whatever. And save them the hassle of everybody coming on the forums and complaining about everything. The problem is, is that they enact these changes. They do this stuff without talking to anybody. It comes to the PTS and then they're shocked about it because they thought it was going to be great. But realistically, most of these guys aren't playing this game that much. They're so busy developing it. They're not the ones actually playing it on, an, on a daily basis, spending all this time doing a bunch of stuff with it. So I'm really not a fan of this. Item sets, sure, but 66% of this developer quote-unquote deep dive is going to be about delves, public dungeons, and standalone quests. That's just not good enough. This is not something that represents the player base. Like, why are we talking about, like, this is not like a, a deep dive is not a time to pat yourself on the back about how long you spent trying to personify this new Daedric Prince and all this stuff. It's just not the time. Let's get into the MMO elements, the foundation of the game, and the reason that people keep playing. Let's talk about item bloat. Let's talk about ink drop rates, scribing and the issues with it currently and what we're doing. And let's talk about the vision for update 43 before we even get to the PTS. 
so that we can get there together and develop something that everybody's excited about. That's my two cents. I don't know what y'all think about this. I'm personally never really looking forward to a lot of these interviews because 99.9% .9 of the time, it's about stuff that I feel like most people don't care about. And it's kind of just a pat on the back. Like it's not like a deep dive answering questions and actual concerns. Um, it just seems kind of distasteful to do that, knowing that there's so many questions and stuff all the time and we don't ever get any answers. But anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.